Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss what is going on with the infamous Japanese exploding whale that you could have seen on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, I'll show you the clip here, and then we'll discuss what is going on and how this actually occurs biologically. So the whale that I just showed you has been deceased for some amount of time. It's been dead. And so how is it that this guy cuts into the whale's side and it just explodes with a tremendous amount of pressure? What we're really going to be looking at is the buildup of gases inside the whale after it dies. Okay. So obviously when any organism dies, their lungs are going to stop. Okay, so your heart stops, your lung stops, the whole body stops. Okay, And so what we know about the respiratory system, hopefully, is that the respiratory system, i.e. the lungs, is going to be responsible for exhalation of carbon dioxide, so getting rid of carbon dioxide. Okay, So every time you exhale, when you go up to a mirror and you breathe on the mirror and you see that condensation on there, um, the condensation is water, but you're actually getting rid of carbon dioxide, which from the body's perspective is waste. Now, if you have a deceased organism, such as a whale, uh, they're no longer able to get rid of that carbon dioxide. And so that carbon dioxide is just going to not be expelled, it's just going to be inside the organism. And one thing that happens to carbon dioxide, if you just let it sit for some amount of time, is it can actually convert into acid. Okay, um, If you want to see the exact equation for this, you can actually just Google uh, the bicarbonate carbonic acid buffering system, and through a mechanism very similar to that, you can actually get carbon dioxide uh, turned into the H plus ion, okay, or H3O plus. So that's the acidification, and that's going to occur inside the body of the whale because the whale can no longer exhale CO2, so the CO2 acidifies into acid. Now, eventually that acid is going to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. And here we have an example cell. Obviously inside the cell we've got proteins, we've got lipids and so on and so forth. Okay, lipids are also going to exist in the membrane of the cell, but over time as the acid builds up inside the dead organism, that acid is going to erode away the plasma membrane of all of these cells. And so we're going to get degradation of those cell membranes, and so we're going to have these gaps in the membrane as shown right here. The membranes are going to break down, and all the contents of the cell are going to be expelled just into the general you know, area of the dead body. Okay? So for example, lipids are going to leak out, and then proteins are going to leak out, and of course there's other things as well. Now for example, the lipids can actually be uh, metabolized into energy by bacteria. And so one of the things we're going to discuss is that when an organism dies, you have an overpopulation of bacteria. Okay. Um, now, every mammal, as far as I know, has a microbiome. For example, in the human gastrointestinal tract, we have tons of bacteria that actually are helpful and are actually necessary for healthy life. But when the organism dies, it gets an over, overpopulation of these bacteria, and these bacteria can actually metabolize these lipids into energy and carbon dioxide. Now, some of this carbon dioxide, in fact, can uh, be acidified into more acid, but one of the things that the carbon dioxide can also do is it can actually be utilized by specific bacteria which are methanogenic. So some bacteria can actually take carbon dioxide and fix it in a different way than we would see in photosynthesis. They can actually fix it into a molecule called methane. Okay, and methane can be used by other bacteria, but methane actually we're going to see a buildup inside the, the body of the dead organism. So one of the things that's contributing is methane. Now again, we have an overpopulation of all kinds of bacteria inside this decaying now organism. And it's decaying because all the contents of the body are being degraded by these bacteria. The other thing that can be degraded are proteins. And again, these bacteria can proteolize the proteins into individual amino acids, one of which is going to be lysine. So lysine is one amino acid that's found in protein. It's one of the 20. And some organisms, and bacteria are no exception, they have the ability to decarboxylate lysine. And this is catalyzed by an enzyme called lysine decarboxylase. This enzyme specifically targets the alpha carboxyl group, which is the only carboxyl group on lysine, removes it, and you get this molecule called cadaverine. Come back to that in a minute. 
There's also another amino acid. This one is not found in proteins. It's actually found in the urea cycle, but there's plenty of it inside uh, an organism. It's called ornithine. This molecule can also be decarboxylated uh, by a similar enzyme. Sometimes you'll actually refer to it as ornithine decarboxylase, but it has the same general mechanism. It's going to remove the alpha carboxyl group of ornithine, and instead you're going to get this molecule, which is called putrescine. Now, the way these two uh, amine type molecules get their names is because cadaverine and putrescine smell really, really, really bad. Okay. In fact, um, hopefully you've never experienced this, but if you actually worked in a morgue, let's say, or you're a police officer and you go to investigate the scene of a murder and there's a dead body and the smell of dead bodies are actually these two molecules right here. Cadaverine gets the name because it, it's the smell of a cadaver. Okay, a dead body. And then putrescine gets its name because it's putrid. Uh, that's why I put the picture of the guy here holding his nose because they smell terrible. So these two molecules are going to be mainly responsible for uh, the terrible smell that's associated with a decaying body. But the main thing that's really going on here is that we're having a lot of gas buildup. In particular, methane is going to be a molecule that's in the gas phase and it's going to increase the pressure inside the organism. Now again there's also other gases here such as oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, but in particular the methane is really what's going to uh, cause the pressure inside this decaying organism to build up and up and up and up. And so the key to remember here is we've got a drastically increased pressure inside that dead whale. And so ultimately what's going to happen if I were to sum up once the whale dies uh, we have a bacterial overpopulation. I should really put overpopulation because it's much more bacteria than we would see in a living organism. They're going to be producing gas products. Um, now, they're going to be producing cadaverine, but the major gas product is going to be methane. Um, and there's other things. Even carbon dioxide will, to some extent, um, actually increase the pressure inside the organism. And so we have increased pressure due to the gas production by the bacteria. And eventually what happens is there's so much pressure inside that organism that if you so much as puncture it, um, and in the video the guy was uh, cutting it with some kind of tool, he creates an opening and that causes the release of the pressure and you get the explosion. It's very similar to if you're blowing up a balloon. Eventually there's some threshold where the balloon cannot fit any more gas inside of it and it pops. Okay, Very similar to that concept. Now, this process also occurs with elephants and I'll show you a clip of that right now. And even though the elephant is a terrestrial animal, whereas the whale is aquatic, the same mechanism is going to be at play. You have the elephant dying. It's going to be overpopulated with bacteria after it's deceased, subsequent gas production and increased pressure, and then, boom, it explodes. Now, the question is, I don't think we've ever heard of this occurring in a human or any kind of pet or anything like that, and the question is why. Well, the reality is, is that, this only occurs with very large organisms. Okay, So obviously a human relative to the size of an elephant or a whale is very, very small. Um, and so it turns out that smaller organisms this does not happen with because it requires a large amount of biomass in order to produce enough gas to where you can get that pressure buildup. So these two organisms are some of the largest on the planet. And so from the bacteria's point of view, there's enough mass, enough biomass available to convert into these gases such as methane to where the pressure can increase to that point where it actually explodes. This is why you'll never see it in smaller organisms like humans. It's only going to be in very large organisms such as these two. And there are others that are very large as well that you might expect. And so I guess the key here is the bigger they are, the harder they explode. Okay, so. That is the mechanism behind the infamous Japanese exploding whale. Really, it's just after death you have bacterial overpopulation, subsequent gas production, and then enough pressure causes that organism to explode. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video and got a little bit of interesting information out of it. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.